What's up, you crazy movie collectors, and welcome back to The Lucid Nightmare. I'm your host, as always, Jay Schatzer, and happy 4th of July. Uh, I just got my uh, spring into summer sale from Kino Lorber, the new sale, um, and got 10 movies to show off. And yeah, it's been a while. Um, I've just been enjoying the summer and uh, enjoying the outdoors. As you can see, I'm a little red, just went kayaking all day yesterday. And um, yeah, just staying active. But I'm um, always thinking about the channel and thought I could do a quick one for you guys and show you what I just received in the mail. But um, let's dive in. Here's the Kino Lorber sale. Um, I don't know, they have so many different titles for these ones. I know it has something to do with summer. So here's the summer Kino, Kino Lorber sale. Uh, first up is one of the ones I'm probably most excited about getting because it's a film that I didn't see until recently, um, but I've never owned prior, so it's a classic slasher film. The movie is New Year's Evil, and this one comes with the slip uh, with a kind of new redesigned cover and then the old school poster art, which I always thought was cool and intriguing. But um, yeah, like I said, I have, didn't see this one until recently and really enjoyed it. Thought it was a cool, atmospheric, mean-spirited slasher film from the 80s, and just really cool. Really cool, really cool. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, and I think, yeah, this is an MGM release. Can I did not realize this was a canon film, but uh, yeah, awesome, awesome film. One that I'll probably try to do a review for once I get back into doing the reviews and hunkering down and uh, getting back to editing, but um, yeah, New Year's Evil, fantastic slasher film, and I'm very, very thankful that I have it finally in the collection. Uh, maybe I'll do a review closer to actual New Year's Eve. A little festive treat to look forward to. But let's move it on to a movie I have not seen, but I have actually seen this story many, many times throughout the years. Um, it's a story that's been uh, adapted many times. It is Burke and Hare. And, um, yeah, it's pretty much just a story about gravediggers. Uh, getting bodies for a mad scientist. And, um, I don't know much about this one at all. Uh, yeah. I, I really, I really, I really, know, I really know absolutely nothing other than it looks a little, little risque in parts. So... Little cheeky material there, little 70s flair. But um, yeah, uh, if any of you guys have seen this one, like I've said, I've seen very uh, various different variations of this story, um, but never seen this one. So I don't even know, I don't even know what its origins are. If it's a, I don't know, doesn't say anything. UK, it's the British, British version of this, which there are many British versions of this story. But, um, yeah, Burke and Hare. Let me know if, if you've seen this one before, because I would love to know anything about it. Clueless. But uh, first time in the collection, just as New Year's Evil was. But um, let's move it on to a movie that is one of my favorites from growing up. Uh, I would catch this one whenever it was on TV. And um, I don't know why. I just, it's very weird. It has an awesome soundtrack. Well, a main song. Uh, but... It is, it's bizarre, man. 80s had such bizarre premises. But uh, this one is Date with an Angel. And it pretty much follows this guy right here, who I think he comes across some chick in the middle of a forest. Uh, and she's hurt, injured. And he comes to find that she's actually an angel fallen from heaven. So he tries to keep her safe and out of harm's way. And... All the while, his jealous, I think it's actually his girlfriend, so she has all, you know, all the rights in the world. I think it's his uh, fiance has all the right in the world to be pissed off. So she's, she's pissed off at this angel. He's trying to appease both of them, and it gets kind of crazy towards the end. But, I mean, this is all going from memory when I watched it when I was probably t uh, 13, maybe, was the last time I saw this. So it definitely stuck with me over the years. And I've always been wanting to uh, get it into the collection. And then when I saw that Kino, uh, Kino was going to be releasing it through their label, um, I was just hoping and praying that it was going to come across on one of these sales. And lo and behold, it has. So, Date with an Angel. And it's got the uh, badass song Send Me an Angel by um, 
can't remember what the hell that group's name name is. And it's actually written and directed by Tom McClellan, who also did Friday the 13th, Jason Lives. So <laughs> random as hell, but uh, definitely an, uh, definitely a memorable film because it has stuck with me throughout all the years. But first time in the collection. So many of these are going to be first time in the collection. Whether, but I have seen a good majority of them. But um, yeah, a lot of firsts for the collection, which is always good. Next up is an Italian uh, Jaws ripoff flick by Lamberto Bava, who is one of my favorite uh, Italian schlock directors. Uh, this movie is not one of his best, but it still is entertaining. It's got some uh, familiar faces if you love 80s Italian genre films. But um, the movie is Devil Fish. <laughs> and I guess it also was called, uh, let me see, Monster Shark. It also goes by Monster Shark inside under the disc in there. But um, yeah, I just know it by Devil Fish. And this was one of uh, our Monday movie nights that we watched. Uh, my friends and I get together and watch crappy weird flicks. And Devil Fish was one of them. I believe I fell asleep during part of it. But um, definitely was fun from the moment I was awake for. So now that I own it, I will sit down and watch it all the way through. But um, yeah, fan of Lumberto Bava and love Italian weird-ass 80s cinema. And this is right up there with some of the weirdest. Uh, yeah, devil fish. Good old devil fish. But yeah, that's about all I have to say for devil fish. Um, fun film. Fun, fun film. Let's move it on to a very intriguing, I believe this is a 70s, 1975, uh, very strange, outside-of-the-box looking film. Um, and I only go by that from the trailer of viewing it, and um, it was kind of very strange. It's got a kick-ass cast, um, and yeah, the movie is The Reincarnation of Peter Proud, and very weird-looking movie. With a lot of cool imagery, uh, very strange concept, uh, and I think a guy is starts acting strange, and it's a, he's a reincarnation of an, another person. His girlfriend doesn't know what to do, but um, Jennifer O'Neill is in this one, who is uh, one of my favorites from uh, Lucio Fulci's The Psychic. Uh, she's stunning as hell. She's also in Scanners, David Cronenberg's Scanners, um, and I guess Margot Kidder is in this too, but I didn't realize that until now. But uh, definitely a cool, cool-looking film. Love that 70s kind of trippy atmosphere. There's another poster behind here. Let me show it. There we go. Another poster back there. I love those kind of double-sided cover art that you can switch around. But um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting this one. Uh, I've had it on my Amazon wish list forever, and it just never came down in price where I justified buying it. So with the Kino sale, I jumped on it because it was going pretty cheap. But, uh, yep, Reincarnation of Peter Proud. Definitely first in the collection and blind buy on my part because I've only seen the trailer, but it intrigued me enough that I want to see more. Let's move, let's move it on to something completely ridiculous now that I look down and see what's next. Um, I've never seen this one, but I've seen many reviews on YouTube about it. Uh, it's one of those so bad it's good movies, but I don't even think it gets to that level of being good. Uh, it's cringeworthy, straight out of the 90s. Um, 1991 to be exact, starring an unlikely lead hero who thinks he is so damn cool. Well, he's as cool as ice. Um, uh, Vanilla Ice is, I believe it's his only attempt at jumping into the, into the movies. Um, <laughs> hey, I, I love Ice Ice Baby and, um, Ninja Rap from Ninja Turtles too. But, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's a guilty pleasure, I would say, if anything. And... Yeah, from all the reviews, it just looks ridiculous. Uh, super cheesy, over the top, cornball all the way. And I'm so excited to actually sit down and watch the whole thing. Uh, <laughs> what is his name? Rip Van Winkle or something? No, it's, um, what's his real name? Do they even put it in here? No, they just call him Vanilla Ice. <laughs> his last name is Van Winkle or something like that. But um, yeah, Cool as Ice, definitely a guilty pleasure. Uh, movie, a so bad it's good movie, uh, just weird. And I had to jump on it when I saw it in the the wish list. I or on the uh, Kino sale. Um, I was like, you know what? Why not? Why the hell not? So Cool as Ice is in the collection. 
Um, I don't know if it makes my movie collection better or worse. Probably worse, but I don't care. Uh, <laughs> let's just move on from that one. Let's go with a Gene Rowland film. I believe, right? Yeah, Gene Rowland from 1980, the year I was born. And it is Night of the Hunted. And I, I'm slowly upgrading all these redemption um, kind of Gene Rowland films and other like genre films of that nature. And uh, this one was very interesting from what I remember. remember. I owned it on DVD prior. And um, yeah, it's the Bridget Leigh. How do you say it? Leahy? I always get it wrong. Or I feel like I get it wrong. Uh, I think it's Bridget Leahy is her name. But um, well, I know it's her name, but I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. But uh, yeah, it's pretty much she's... Her and another girl are in this crazy, almost like an... I guess it is an insane asylum and she escapes. And um, just a lot of weird imagery and surreal kind of storytelling in the whole thing. As any Gene Roland film. But um, yeah, it's, he's pretty much a favorite of hers, like an actress to work with. Because she is in a number of his... Uh, features uh, like fascination and um, the grapes of death yeah I always want to say grapes of wrath but um I think she has a small role in that yeah she's the crazy sexy looking chick but um definitely an interesting film as you can see perverted and a lot of scantily clad stuff going on here as any Gene Roland film would be but um yeah figured I'd pick it up because I own it prior on DVD I think I own some kind of foreign release for it so, have it in the Blu-ray collection now, and uh, Region A, I believe. But, um, or it's probably all Region, doesn't even say. But, yeah, interesting stuff. Definitely check this one out if you like Gene Rowland's other films. It's It's got his same stamp of approval and weird atmosphere and just kind of artistic, um, like a balance between artsy-fartsy stuff and sleaze. It's probably the best way to describe uh, Gene Rowland. <laughs> Well, let's move it on to some lighter fare with an 80s comedy that I didn't realize until recently um, that it's one that I've seen before. I never knew the name of it. I always just caught it on TV. I never saw the whole thing all the way through, just bits and pieces, but I always was uh, entertained as a kid with it. I, and I actually didn't realize it was this movie until I believe it is Good Bad Flicks did a, a review of it. So definitely check out, I don't, I think that's his channel's name, channel name, Good Bad Flicks. But, um, yeah, he's, his stuff is amazing. There's a lot of appreciation going into these movies that you wouldn't really appreciate that much. But then when he goes into detail about kind of the, uh, the film, the story behind things, um, it, it's really interesting. So check that channel out. If that's even the right channel name, I'm just going off memory. Um, but yeah, Moving Violations is the movie I'm talking about. <laughs> Get to the point. But, um. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a crazy, crazy concept of just a group of miscreants who have to go to traffic school because they've all broken the law in various ways. And um, they pretty much just are hassled throughout uh, driving school. And um, then they kind of have all these wacky antics. It's almost like a police academy version of just normal citizens going through driving school. It's pretty much the best way to describe it. It's a wacky, weird 80s comedy. Um, and yeah, just a really great cast of kind of familiar faces. Um, the only time that, um, what's his face? Bill Murray's brother, John Murray, but I mean, there's a whole bunch of Murray's, but John Murray's the lead star in this one. I think he does a pretty decent job in it. It's the only time he's really been able to shine on films as the leading man, but, uh, Moving Violations, fun, fun film. And I'm really, really looking forward to checking this one out because it has been really too long. And like I said, I'd never even watched it all the way through is just one of those ones I caught bits and pieces of over the years and can't wait to check it all. Oh, and it's actually directed by um, Neil Israel, who is actually involved in the Police Academy films. So I guess that's why it has that same flavor. But Moving Violations, first time in the collection and not necessarily first time viewing it, but I know of it. And now that I've, now it's in the collection. <laughs> But next up is a movie that, let's go with this. Next up is a movie by Umberto Lenzi. Uh, it's the whole craze when um, Conan the Barbarian was out there. Uh, and same ilk of Beastmaster, all those different fantasy sword and sorcerer epics. Um, the Italians had to get involved in it, like always. And this is one of their attempts 
at jumping into the genre. And it is Iron Master. Now, this one I've never seen before. Um, and I don't know how heavy it goes onto fantasy. It looks like it's more of almost like a caveman flick. So, I mean, either way, it's going to be interesting. It's got George Eastman in there acting like George Eastman. <laughs> and um, right there, you can see him. But, um, yeah, it's pretty much the uh, sword and sorcerer caveman style films with uh, scantily clad women, uh, brutality around every corner, and low budget Italian schlocky goodness. But, um, yeah, Iron Master. I think there's a lot of like weird ape men like this in it too so that's always fun <laughs> but um iron master yeah i got nothing much more to say about iron master other than what i just did so let's just move on but yeah first time in the collection um never seen it before so it's gonna be interesting to check out but last but definitely not least is another movie that i this is probably my second most excited one to get during the sale because I watched it on a movie Monday night with the guys and I thought it's so weird and unusual, but a very satisfying film. I never heard of it prior and it's just got a weird cast. Um, it's weird. It's really, really weird. But um, the movie is Homebodies and I, I'm trying to figure out how to even explain this movie, but it's about a bunch of elderly tenants in an apartment building that all these guys are all getting kicked out and booted to the streets because a rich kind of person's coming in and bulldozing the area and building a huge um, business tower or even apartments. It's just a more modern building in its place. So <laughs> this gang of uh, senior citizen miscreants decide to sabotage the construction site so it, in the first, in the beginning of the movie, it feels like there's just a bunch of weir really brutal but weird and um, strange deaths happening at the construction site. And some of, these, some of these are over the top ridiculous. And you don't really know what the hell is going on. But I mean, you come to find that it's pretty much like, I, I don't even know how to describe it. it. They're just fighting back to, to maintain their home and make sure they don't get kicked out. And just the whole cast is great. This lady's, it, they're all great. They, they really do an amazing job of like being sympathetic to their like plight, feeling sorry for what they're going through, but they are, they're crazy. The whole, the whole group is crazy and they all have their own individual personalities, but it's a really, really interesting film to say the least. And, um, inside cover, different cover art there. I don't know if that was the original, I don't know if even, I mean, both of these look like they could be the original artwork, but, um, yeah, it's. It's just a really fascinating film. Definitely a slow burn character study on just all the individuals and how they interact with each other. And, um, but just the, the way it's shot and the style is very, very unusual, laid back, grungy, and very, very captivating, I guess, is the best way you can say it. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a unique oddity that you definitely have to check out. And I was going to do a review on this um probably like the exact time i watched it on that movie monday but it never got around to it so i'm hoping to be able to do a review of that on this one on the in the future because it really is cool but um yeah that's homebodies <laughs> really 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 interesting to say the least but that is all 10 i believe it's 10 hopefully i didn't really count them but um all 10 of the kino lorber sale for this month it's still going on i believe so if you see any of these ones that you want to pick up uh, there's a whole shitload of other ones i think there, i want to say there was like 800 titles on sale and i own a good good majority of them so it's always nice to be able to find ones that i didn't actually pick up and i think there's probably ten, i mean i i found a handful more that i would want to pick up maybe later on at the tail end of the sale but um great great uh just label in general they just have great prices on their sales unlike other sales where you just pretty much seems like you're paying the same price for it if you would just buy it at any other real tail uh realtor a real real tailor I, I don't even i'm so tired right now i got too much sun yesterday but yeah um yeah definitely check out the sale uh pick some stuff up hope you hopefully you got some ideas with that of uh, what with what i picked up and yeah that's it i'm done but hopefully you guys are enjoying your 4th of July. 
Um, I saw f there's been fireworks displays every day in the last couple days. Saw one down at my family's cottage two days ago. It was fantastic over the lake. Um, debating on going to the one in uh, my area tonight. Uh, I don't know if my daughter and I are just going to stay in with a movie and relax or what. But um, yeah, I hope you're enjoying the 4th of July. Having some fun picnics, celebrations, parades, whatever you guys do. Uh, I hope you're staying out of trouble and staying healthy. And I will see you guys next time uh, I'm in front of a camera talking about movies. Or uh, hopefully I get editing, um, back into editing with some movie reviews. I Like I said before, I have the scripts for four written out. I just have to get in front of the camera, film it, and then get on the computer and edit it. So I think I'm going to get inspired in the next week or two. I'll get you. I'll get you guys covered. But, um, oh, and I also have um, some other stuff that, I mean, I have a whole shitload of stuff that came in the mail. Um, the pile's back, so I'm never going to run out of different um, movie haul videos. Um, but I have this one I want to just do an in-depth, in-depth, and I said this before, an in-depth kind of view of the packaging and everything because it's really cool artwork throughout the whole um, set that I got. But, um, yeah, that's it. So I will see you guys later. Have fun and stay out of trouble. Don't get blown up. Uh, I'll see you later guys.